Some new details this morning on the Hillary Clinton email story. The Justice Department reportedly giving immunity to the man who destroyed the backups, the archives of the Clinton emails. We're going to have more on that, the timeline for that in just a moment. But first, here are some new polls in the presidential race. They show Clinton and Trump locked in a very tight race in the key battleground states. Tied in the state of Florida, 47-47. Donald Trump has a one-point lead inside the margin of error in Ohio. Let's go to Pennsylvania, where Clinton leads 48 to 43. She was ahead 47 to four, uh, rather she's ahead 47 to 43 in North Carolina, another close state as well. Senior national correspondent John Roberts joins us now live. He's in New York outside of Trump Tower with a look at what's going on with these numbers. Good morning to you, John. Martha, good morning to you. You can bet that the Trump campaign is feeling pretty good about where those battleground numbers are going. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the polls. First, the state of Florida, which finds pretty stark racial and gender gaps. Donald Trump leads among men, 58 to 36. Hillary Clinton leads among women by a similar number, 56 to 36. Among white voters, Donald Trump leads 59-36, while among black voters, Hillary Clinton has a 67-25 lead, but that 25% uh, number for Donald Trump better than in some states. Among independents, Donald Trump leads by nine points, 48 to 39. To the battleground state of Ohio now, similar split in gender. Donald Trump leading among men, 53 to 28. Hillary Clinton, 52 39 among women. But here's where it gets a little more disparate. Among white voters, Donald Trump has a 53 38 lead. But look at this. Among non white voters, Hillary Clinton leads 81 to 11. And among independent voters, they're almost even. Donald Trump leads 43-41. This is a state where Gary Johnson polls at 15%. So according to Quinnipiac, he could be a big factor in what happens in the Buckeye State. In Pennsylvania, the big news is that Hillary Clinton currently leads by five points, 48 to 43. But take a look at this. Back in August 9th, she had a 10-point lead, 52 to 42. The reason why she has gone down, a lot of support being lost for her among women. Quinnipiac now saying that state, which looked like it was leading toward Hillary, is now up for grabs. North Carolina, not much of a gender gap, but a big racial gap there. And another poll, a Suffolk University poll, uh, Martha, that found that Donald Trump leads 44 to 41. So he's got a three-point lead. So a little disparity between the Quinnipiac and the Suffolk University polls. Yeah, Martha. these might be the most interesting battleground state polls that we have seen, John, uh, because they come Certainly. after this sort of pivot so-called in the Trump campaign and the more substantive speeches that he has laid down over the last three weeks. So they show a very tight race. Today, he's going to spend his time at the Value Voters Summit. So what's he expected to talk about when he is there today, John? Yeah, yeah, this afternoon, 3:30 uh, in Washington, and on that last point too, Martha. You know, his campaign had predicted that the polls were going to tighten after the pivot. It looks like those predictions were right. Before the Values Voters Summit this afternoon, he's likely to talk about what he says is the importance of nominating strict constructionist conservative justices to the Supreme Court in the mold of Antonin Scalia. He'll also talk about his support for a repeal of what he calls the Johnson Law, which prohibits religious organizations from engaging in political activities. And he'll delve further into the opportunity scholarships that he laid out yesterday in Cleveland, taking a block of $20 billion of federal money that's currently available, giving that to the states as block grants so they can provide scholarships for students who live in poverty to go to the school of their choice. Here's the big picture that Donald Trump outlined yesterday on that front. Listen. If we can put a man on the moon, dig out the Panama Canal, and win two world wars, then I have no doubt that we as a nation can provide school choice to every disadvantaged child in America. All of this this afternoon, and it will include his running mate Mike Pence, is designed to energize social conservatives who stayed home by the millions in 2012. You can also expect Donald Trump to go hard on Hillary Clinton, and particularly these latest revelations that yet another person who was involved in wiping the emails from that server has pleaded the fifth. Martha? Mm, yep. John, thank you very much. More to Bill. come on that. Also, Chris Starwalt now some analysis. Now, Fox News digital policy editor in D.C. And Chris, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, size it up, first of all. Where do you see the movement before we go to the map here? Well, <clears throat> the good news for Donald Trump is he can't be president if he can't win Florida and Ohio, and he is back in contention in both of those states, and uh, he has gotten over these, uh, it appears that he has gotten over those August doldrums, and uh, that's very good news for him. All right, now on the map here, here's how we have it today where it stands. Electoral vote, Democrats 217, Republicans 163. 
you got to get to 270, right, Chris? That's the game. Right. If you give Trump, watch the numbers now, okay? If you uh -oh. give him Florida and you give him North Carolina based on the polling, Ohio uh -oh. and Pennsylvania are now at 245, and then a few others fall in line, like perhaps a Georgia or traditional Arizona, and now you see uh, the path to the White House. It's not easy, but with yeah. those four states, he can do it. Go. Yeah, but I think you better turn Pennsylvania and North Carolina blue right now at least. Uh, Donald Trump definitely needs uh, Pennsylvania if he doesn't have North Carolina, uh, but he's not likely to get it. Remember, think of it this way. Uh, North Carolina is more Republican than Pennsylvania. He's not likely to get to Pennsylvania if he can't get past North Carolina. It's, it, they're, they're markers on the wall. And if you're not this tall, you cannot ride this ride. And for Donald Trump, if he's not as beyond North Carolina, Carolina, there's no way that he's going to get to be president. So his deficit in North Carolina right now should be very concerning to his campaign. And the reason he's behind in North Carolina seems pretty evident. There are too many college-educated, affluent voters. These are the voters that he continue to continues to struggle with. These are voters who, uh, among white voters in this category, Republicans traditionally do well with. He's not doing well enough. He's got to fix that if he wants to well, win con this thing. Conversely, you could flip that around and show how easy it is for her to win the White House based on the numbers as they are today. Um, Jill Stein, Gary Johnson, do you yeah. see, with Gary Johnson being the news so much in the last 24 hours, do you see either one affecting this race in certain states? You look at dadgum Ohio. You look at your state. You look at the Buckeye State, Brother Bill. Uh, what do you see over there? Uh, when you take it as a two-way race, Hillary Clinton is doing fine in Ohio or in, in, in the mix. You put Gary Johnson in the mix. You put Jill Stein. Now, Jill Stein doesn't take as much. What seems to be happening is that voters who can't bring themselves to vote for Donald Trump, uh, who say, well, I guess I'll, I'll have to vote for Hillary Clinton, I'll have to go over here. When you offer Gary Johnson or anybody, really, they could put Captain Crunch or anybody else they want on the ballot, people say, uh, I'll take any... The only thing I know about this person is that it's neither Hillary Clinton nor Donald Trump, so I'm going to take this person, and that seems to be hurting Hillary more. I'd prefer Tony the Tiger, but, you know, <laughs> I was always a Frosted Flakes kind of guy. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Thank you, Chris. Captain Have a great Crunch weekend. Crunch yes. or Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. <laughs> the other day it was chicken or fish, so I mean, we're just mixing up a little bit now. All right. So here's what we have for you now. Hillary Clinton saying that the emails that she sent with classified material in them only had a few small marks on the side to indicate their seriousness. But how can she actually argue that, given her own past and her understanding about what the C means? New evidence now surfacing that very much contradicts her statements. We're going to talk to Congressman Trey Gowdy coming up.